What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to find the third number of a Pythagorean triple, right? So let's start with this example right here. So this one says, find a third whole number such that the three numbers form a Pythagorean triple. All right, so we're already given two numbers right here, 12 and 37. So we're trying to figure out what third number right here would form a Pythagorean triple with these two. Now, the issue here is uh, this missing number. We don't know if it's the hypotenuse. We don't know if it's maybe one of the shorter legs. Maybe it goes somewhere in here between 12 and 37, right? So remember, for three numbers to form a Pythagorean triple, they have to satisfy the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, okay? So uh, let's just assume that 12 and 37, let's just assume that they're the two shorter sides and maybe the missing side is the hypotenuse, right? So in this case, here we can say uh, that a is 12, so we'll have 12 squared plus b squared, which again is 37. So 37 squared is equal to c squared. 12 squared is 144. 37 squared is 13 69ths. And again, that's equal to c squared. Now 144 plus 13 69 is equal to 15 13. And that's equal to c squared. Now to solve for c here and to get rid of this exponent, we just need to take the square root of both sides. So then on this side, the radical and the squared exponent cancel out. So we're left with c is equal to the square root of uh, 1513, which is equal to, looks like approximately 38.9. Okay, so here, as you can see, we've run into an issue, right? Because we were looking for a whole number, but we got a fraction or a decimal, I should say. Because remember, the problem said find a third whole number so that these three numbers form a Pythagorean triple. But since we got a decimal, then we obviously did something wrong, right? And what we did wrong was assuming that 12, right, 12 and 37 were the two shorter sides, right? That's why we plugged it in for A and B for the two shorter sides. But what we can try instead this time is assume that this big number, 37, is maybe the hypotenuse. And maybe what we were actually missing was one of the missing sides here, right? Okay, so again, these three numbers have to satisfy this equation. I'll just write it one more time. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. So 12 is obviously one of the short sides, right? Because it's smaller than 37. So we can plug it in for A and B. Let's just plug it in for A. So here we're going to have 12 squared plus B squared is equal to and again, this time we're going to assume that 37 is the hypotenuse. Let's say 37 squared. So here we get 144 plus b squared is equal to 1369. Now to solve for b squared, let's get rid of this 144. There we go. So then we're left with b squared is equal to, looks like 1225. All right, so to solve for b here, let's take the square root of both sides. Again, these cancel out. So here we get that b is equal to 35. And as you can tell, 35 is obviously a whole number, All right? So it looks like the three numbers that we should have up here are 12, 35, and 37. Boom. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.